It is that time of the week again for Bent TV. Welcome. Tonight, Quedia, Steve speaks with Justin Gummer from the inaugural Geelong Pride Games beginning 28th of October. Then Dean and his guests in Between the Sheets discuss AFL and the Pride Game. And then to finish off tonight, Steve steps up to the plate once again in Quedia, this time Invasion of the Nudies, an event held earlier this year. Good evening, welcome to Ben TV. My name is Steve Pereira, and you're watching Quedia, where we explore all things art and culture, and today, sports in the Greater Melbourne area. Today we're talking to Justin Gummer from the Geelong Pride Games, the very first Geelong Pride Games. Welcome to Ben TV, Justin. Oh, thank you very much, Steve. It's really great to be here on Ben. Thanks for the invitation. Well, thanks for joining us. This is exciting. This is the first ever Pride Games in Geelong in the, in the area. Can you That's tell us right. a bit more about the Games? Yeah, so the Games is, is a four-day um, weekend extravaganza, and it's um, including kind of social sports. So we've got things like mini golf, table tennis, ten-pin bowling, and a pool. Why the idea of gay games in Geelong? Um, well, there is, it really isn't a culture in Geelong, and there are um, institutions that like the health services and youth services, but they don't form networks, and so it's really to get something going and provide some avenues and exposure for our gay and lesbian community there. But it's not just about Geelong, it's about the greater vicinity, the that's the correct. That's, it's, so we're looking at the Barwon area, which yeah. is the Surf Coast, the Golden Plain Shire, and also um, Bellarine Peninsula really beautiful part of town. And what sort of games do you have planned? Um, so that was the mini golf and yep. um, I think originally people were a little bit disappointed because they said Pride Games thinking it was a really sporty event mm. but we have gone for the more kind of less competitive games so it's people don't feel um, put off but everyone's welcome whatever their ability and what their interest trying to make it really friendly. Because the gay games in themselves now are a huge international phenomena. That's they're right. Happening, they happen around the globe and and it's at a very professional level of sports. That's you know. right. The gay games actually have more attendees than the Olympic games do globally. So, wow. Um, so it's really quite a big thing now. So we wanted to dif differentiate ourselves um, from the gay games by calling ourselves Pride Games. And also Pride is more inclusive as a word. It's not just um, for gay men, which a lot of people associate gay as being that sort of noun. So are you targeting professional athletes or are you targeting people who just got, want to come out and have Oh, it's just time? to come out and have some fun really and to get involved with the community and to um, network and meet other people who are out in, and about really. So it's not about the serious competition? Oh, well, we've got medals and we've got some great prizes. <laughs> so it's always important. If you're there to win, then go and have fun. Um, but really it is about meeting ultimately and knowing that there's community that supports our gay and lesbian people. Sorry, so can you go through the different events again? You've got oh, I said, okay, so we've got the mini golf, which yeah. is on the uh, Saturday morning. It's going to yep. be really exciting. And there's a maze, so you can get lost in one of Victoria's biggest mazes. Now, is this for people of all ages? Families come up with kids? Or, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, if, if you're a minor, then you're welcome to come, but you do need a legal guardian. Yep. And the other games? Uh, the other games, so in the evening, we've got the 10-pin uh, the bowling, which is really great. We've got a really great 10-pin um, bowling lane. And also the pool, with the Slate Pool Lounge, which has uh, got a bar, it's going to be really casual, and just put your name on the board and come and join in. I think it's $10 to get in. It's pretty ambitious holding the events over four days. Was I that? thought it's it great, let's go for the big. We want to um, get exposure, we want to maximise um, the awareness. So by having a single event, I didn't think it was big enough. So by really pushing it and making a feature of, of you know, the, the rainbow flag in particular, if you look anywhere in Geelong, you can see it posted everywhere. So has it been buy-in from the greater Geelong community and from local councils? Um, well, I've kind of initiated it. Mm -hmm. I, um, I don't know many gay people. I've been in Geelong for three years and I was very depressed. I went through a very dark um, time then because I was very isolated and alienated and quite alone in the community or I didn't think there was a community. So by me trying to come out, I'm being an agent of change and trying to initiate some, initi um, some activities and enterprises for the community in Geelong because it really needs support. And what was the response from the other communities in the, the, gay, the, the gay and lesbian community? Uh, well, there isn't really one. Everyone's still a bit closeted. Um, which is a shame. So by having this initiative, it can allow people to come out of their closets and for um, our services to network. So I've got all sorts of saying the health services, that's Bowen Health and Bellarine Community Health and Diversity, which is a multicultural organisation. 
and uh, we've got the switchboard and um, you know the sporting organizations which is the front runners team melbourne has been fantastic and also proud to play so it's really making a health sending a health message to the community that we've got um, services there that we can approach if we need to engage is there a culture component to this as well? Oh, of course, we're yeah. trying to build the fabric. So yeah. by um, getting people out, we can start bringing out people's colors, individual characters, and you know, a bit of fun, and lots of laughter, and make That's it something, you know, take ownership of our community. So is this going to be one of an, an annual event? Then? Um, hopefully it's sustainable. So I'm looking at funding, so I'm, I'm going for grant applications at the moment and um, you know, looking to um, set up an incorporated body as an organisation so the structure is formalised and we can have something that we know is going to happen every year, probably hope for the next indefinitely. So what sort of crowds are you anticipating? How, how many people do you anticipate will come? Um, well, um, probably about a dozen for each event. So just small, local, and a lot of people from Melbourne and from Bendigo. We've had connections and interest from all around the state, which is wonderful. If you're going to grow and expand, then what would be your dream to which way would you go? What, what would you include that you haven't included this year? Oh, I think um, it would really be great to have a march. But um, yeah, I think because it's the first one, we don't want to overreach. And that's the problem a lot of organisations starting up have, mm. is that they go too big too quick. So it's just uh, the main event is the Picnic in the Park, which is the Geelong Pride Festival. And that's on the Sunday, the 30th of October, which is the last Sunday of the month. And we're having a bands, four bands, local uh, drag shows, um, organisations, bring your own picnic, we've got some sporting events and a fun run at 12 o'clock. So I'm looking forward to that. Sounds like a really packed programme. It's going to be wonderful. Are you going to come, Steve? I'd love to come. Awesome. Great. <laughs> I'll take that as an invitation. Yes, please. What's the cost? Is there a cost for punters to come in? No, that's yeah. free. So that's it's um, for people who can't afford the actual games to mm. come along on the picnic and bring your kids. It's family day and it's going to have a really great energy. So if you're going to try and convince people from Melbourne to come up, what would you say to them? Oh, why would you miss out? I love Geelong. It's such a beautiful town. It's interesting that you, that you choose to do it in October rather than during the summer months uh, where the surfing... So is that to break it out of the cycle? To make it I think because people hibernate in winter, so it's yeah. quite hard to get people out. Um, spring's great because everything's starting to waken okay. up and the sun's coming out and it's not too hot at the time of year. Fantastic. So we can really have a nice day without too much heat sunstroke sort of things. Well, there you go. If you've got nothing, well, not if you've got nothing to do, if you want something really exciting to do and you're looking for a good spring awakening, head up to Geelong to the Great Pride Games. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Steve. It's and been good a luck with this and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. And we look much. forward to growing this. Thank you very much. We've been talking to Justin Gunner from the Geelong Pride Games happening October 28th to the 1st of November. Head on up. It's going to be an exciting time, and this is the first of an annual series of events. You've been watching Steve Pereira on Ben TV. Good evening. Hi, welcome to Between the Sheets, where we get under the covers on some fabulous issues. Today, joining me in bed is Michael Wheeland and Kirsty Webeck. Hi, guys. Hello. Thank Hello. you for joining me. The topic we're kicking off with is AFL. Is it finally time for us to care about footy because of that Pride match? The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Quite frankly. Do, let's no. start with, do any of us care about footy to begin with? No, absolutely not. I have like a 23% care threshold. I was that football. person that grew up in a family mm. of um, Melbourne and North Melbourne supporters, so obviously I went for Brisbane. Um, the <laughs> Brisbane Bears, because I liked um, koalas, and that was my decision for following <laughs> football. Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting. We've got the Pride match. Um, when this is being filmed, the Pride match mm -hmm. hasn't happened yet, but there's a lot of buzz and a lot of excitement and a lot of people saying, you've got to go, and, and isn't this a huge step in so many ways? Um, are you guys feeling it? Well, I think I think that the the message and the anti homophobia message is is obviously massive. amazing and massive, and I would go to support that. Yeah. To support the message, um, it's not going to make me a season ticket holder <laughs> for the Carlton Club, though. Yeah. <laughs> but it's simply not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's an important match, but it's. Yeah, like you said, it's not about rallying, let's get the gays along to the football, like bring in a new generation, bring in a new group of people. That's not what it's about. It's about showing support for 
the GWTIQ community and making them feel safe in those spaces. Because a lot of people that are queer do already follow the football. Absolutely. But some of them don't feel safe in those spaces. Like I have friends that go that don't go as regularly because of the, the hatred and vitriol and throwing of things and shouting and you're a this and you're a that yeah, and stuff. So yeah. it's about making that, that space safe for, for everyone and where everyone can go and enjoy watching guys run around in little shorts, which Absolutely. I think is the most important I mean, thing. Probably you not as much as Yeah, us. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's not going to be the thing that lures me into it. <laughs> Look, I mean, I think it's absolutely fantastic that we're having it and there's this kind of basic national scale talking about pride and equality. The fact that we have that is great, especially something in relation to AFL. Personally, I'm hoping on the night they upgrade like the chips to something a little bit more fancy. Maybe what, what? some so well crinkle cut would be good. Like, oh, I'm, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, keep it keep it interesting. Dirty yeah. chips. Dirty chips, mm. you know, just Bread just upgrade cheese. everything. I, and I've got to admit, um, I was at the pub the other day, and a guy was walking around in his rainbow St Kilda scarf, and he was a massive St Kilda supporter, and he was very excited. And for him, this was huge. And and I sometimes feel like I miss out because I'm not one of those AFL people. So I'm like, eh, I, I don't I don't quite get all the excitement and buzz about it. But it's sport, and people like playing sport. Yeah. But it is great that we have that that kind of kind of conversation. And Definitely. that there's going to be rainbow marks and like, I mean, I never thought we would have something like that. No, you know? it, it's incredible. It really is good. And hopefully it keeps the dialogue rolling as well. Mm. Yeah. I just never, I mean, even as a kid, did you think we would experience this kind of a thing? Absolutely not. No. 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 When I got dragged along to like little lats, I'm um, not little lats. Little um, athletics. Little <laughs> athletics. <laughs> <laughs> Oz the sports ball, Dean, the sports ball. Um, no, when I got taken along to the Oz kick and stuff, it just didn't feel like a space that I was accepted in no. and, and I didn't feel included. It was the boys club and everything was footy pie, footy pie, beer, footy pie. It wasn't, and I've never been a fan space. of those pies. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> never, ever liked those pies. They just haven't given me the flavour I wanted. I was that kid that would go to the footy with my family and I would take a little Doctor Who book and I would sit there reading a Doctor Who book which, and we'd be in the members section so it would always drive people crazy that um, you know there was just this kid sitting there, what a waste of a seat, Doctor just reading a book, <laughs> didn't care about the game at all. That was before I realised you know puberty and the perv factor right. and by then my parents had given up on paying for the ticket so I just watched that from home. Just watch it from home. You know watch a whole other factor but I, I'm loving seeing the energy and everyone being so excited about the fact that this is going on. Yeah, and hopefully once it's once the conversation keeps going, that dialogue continues. Like you said, it'll have a positive outward effect on conversations around other things, like the the plebiscite. Mm, well, who knows? <laughs> it, it, one thing I do think is funny is that you know uh, some of my straight friends think it's like a Mardi Gras versus Midsummer thing because it's it's St Kilda and Sydney. Can we have that? It's kind of. <laughs> it, they, <laughs> yeah, I love that. I will watch that. Why are we doing that? <laughs> but I love that that you know some straight people feel like it's it's this whole you know the classic Melbourne Sydney rivalry. We're like, oh, we didn't even think of that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, we're just in it for the glitter and, you know, like, yeah, yeah. looking pretty at these events. Yeah, and, it's just another you know. reason to drag the feather bowler out. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I am I am very excited to, to see what kind of shazamming fabulousness is going to happen yeah, at the footy. Yeah. I think it's going to be very impressive, but those stilettos are going to be a problem on the field. They are. It is going to be a bit of an issue. <laughs> We've had a bit of rain. It's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, so, so, I'm just... I'm, well, you go for Carlton, is that what you were saying, footy-wise? No, no, that's, just, that's just, I mean, I was just in Carlton this morning and... <laughs> and so I and guess I, you go for Carlton Yeah, now? I mean, I, yeah, I, I vaguely recalled that that was the name of one of the teams. Yeah, well, So okay. it, it was the first one that popped in. No, it's, I mean, I didn't grow up in Melbourne. Oh, well, that's true, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I didn't even know what the acronym stood for until recent months. So what do you reckon the, the, the next level of a Pride match could be? I want a tennis one. A tennis pride match? Yeah. Okay. I, I reckon a tennis one would be really cool. It's a bit more of a different sport. Yeah. But, you know... I I think the, the tennis ground's a little bit more accepting already. Oh, I yeah. think it'd be nice to have a pride cricket round. <sighs> just think of the pride outfits. Cricket. Like, they need to white spruce up boring. the white. They need to spruce up the white. They could have actual rainbow yeah. uniforms. Yeah, that'd be that nice. That would be pretty cool. My problem with that, though, I find cricket quite boring. I've only ever actually gone to a game once and that was for a mate's bucks and none of us paid attention to the game. It takes forever. It's boring. It takes It's so, so boring. Yeah. At least the footy's going to be sharp and fun yeah. Yeah. and intense. People are running around. You know, Things are being done. Running. Yeah, balls yeah. getting kicked, handballed, you know, but the cricket's just... Oh, Even avid forever. cricket supporters Don't describe it as boring. boring. <laughs> when like, you... They'll be like, I won't miss a game, but oh, it's but so I'm boring. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> yeah. even paying attention. Yeah. yeah, but you could. I reckon it'd be really easy to spruce up the baggy green 
What mm. that hat say where? Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice fedora. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Just a little bit of colour. Yeah, a little totally. Bit, you know, and the feather boa. Feather, feather boa. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah well, that, it goes without saying, doesn't it? <laughs> it's what we need. <laughs> yeah. It's great that we've, we're having sport create this kind of conversation. It's great that we've been able to have Pride move away from what we normally do. Yeah. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing where the next level is. You know, whether it's sport or not, mm. I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Well, thank you for having a chat about football when none of us care about football. <laughs> yeah, it's been a pleasure. In with me. It's an I expert think, panel. I think, yeah, an expert <laughs> panel of people who know nothing, mm. talking about nothing. Uh, this has been Between the Sheets. Thanks for joining me. Good evening, welcome to Ben TV. My name is Steve Pereira and we're in the middle of Paran on a rainy winter Melbourne evening. We're here because we're anticipating an invasion of the nudies. It's a special event in Paran, which is a combination of nudism and science fiction. Hi Brian, are you in fact one of the two poo bars behind us? Good evening and welcome to the invasion day. Thank you. Who's invading and why? The nudies. What's the message you want to send out? What are you saying to people? Uh, tonight is really just about us letting our hair down and having a bit of a dance and a bit of fun uh, in an environment that is safe. How often do you have these events? Uh, sporadically. We don't like to have them too close together because we like nudies events to be individualised and a little bit unique and different to the other naturist nudist events that are held here in Melbourne. So we've held trivia nights, pirate party, laser tag, uh, and, and this is just another uh, event to, to add to our eclectic collection. Now most often people associate the naturalist movement with being outdoors, the sunshine, doing healthy outdoorsy stuff. Mm. But this is an alternative. So. This is a point of difference with nudies, is that we are uh, forward thinking and trying to come up with things that are unique um, to, to the nudist community. Swim nights are very popular, beach days are, are a given because as, as naturists, we do enjoy the outdoors, but also we are young, fun, vibrant community and we'd also like to get together for a little bit of a dance. If you speak to some of the people who attend these events regularly, to us, it is normalised. Uh, there's no sort of... The, the added uh, novelty to this evening is the theme of sci-fi and dressing up. That's the novelty to us, uh, because getting uh, naked is what we do regularly. We're at Invasion of the Nudies with Ben TV, and we're here with Jodie, who's got a very special job. She's a makeup artist I who's am. helping people put on their costumes at a nude costume party. Well, sometimes a bit of body paint, you know, is the costume, so... So is this one of your more unusual gigs? Or... Uh, de definitely, yeah. I do a lot of mainstream theatres. With the body paint that you've got so far, is there a theme emerging? Or is people looking for something specific? Or Yeah, well, there's a, a talk of a bit of wall paint and or obviously the space uh, theme, so a bit of... and glitter. Everybody loves a bit of glitter, so... Yeah, no, it's very casual tonight. Are there no-go zones as to what you will paint and not paint? Not really, I'm a very adventurous, so that's fine with me. We're at Nudie Evasion with Beck and Helena. <laughs> Why are you here? What, what's, what's the event? And this is Nudie's Revolution Sci-Fi Party. Which is a bit of a contradiction to have a costume party for nudists. We actually call it an undressed up party. So it's as dress up or down as much as you're comfortable. That's great. Why, why the sci-fi theme? It gives people an opportunity to express their geekiness and their inner, you know, what books they read or to, to, to say a little bit about themselves without having to say anything. Yeah, because I love to be naked. And uh, my background is actually in sexuality. I'm a sexuality coach. So my, actually my, this is very much ties up with my message to the world that nudity is healthy, it's beautiful, it's natural. Whereas we usually see it as as um, something sexual and something, you know, maybe a little bit shameful and not to really go there, not to explore. But why not? This is, the, I would, this is biology. This is what we are and we should enjoy that. So, so would this be something you'd recommend your clients would come to if they're feeling repressed or um, 
or uptight about the sexuality or the bodies or nudity? I'd say definitely try this kind of events. It's a very safe space as well, mm. so there is nothing to worry about. You know, you can do whatever you want. You can be, you know, you can be just yourself knowing that you're safe. But I don't fit the general standard of beauty. I'm a size 14 to 16, give or take, depending on what clothing size. I don't have a big bosom, I have a big bum. You know, I have fat rolls and I yeah. have wrinkles and I have plenty and plenty of uh, beautiful, beautiful tiger stripes or cellulite and stuff. And I'm okay with how I am. Um, and so I don't fit a standard body image that is portrayed in the media. And I'm happy to speak out and say that it's okay to love who you are. Exactly. And yeah. everybody is different. Every Absolutely. single person we're meant to be is different. different. We're meant to be different. Yeah. yeah. And that's what makes us beautiful. We're at Invasion of the Nudies with Ben TV and I'm sucking my gut in because currently I'm here with Jeffrey, one of the chief boobars of this event and in whose fabulous office space we are in. This is actually the server room for the office that's decorated like a French little powder room. Jeffrey, how amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, thank you. I figured why should a server room just be a boring grey cupboard that everyone forgets about, so... What's news them for you? What, what does it do? What... Oh, is there a purpose or is well, it like just... everyone else, I like that freedom and the liberation of it. The, the way it sort of gets you... just lets you be more relaxed about yourself, you know, like... You know, all of us. Uh, we're very self-critical and um, I think it's, it's a liberating thing to sort of go to these events and just see... I'm sure you're hearing this from everyone, but, but to see all the assortment of everyone, to see how different they are. Fascinating idea, the idea of a, yeah. co of a costume party for nudists. Well, we like, yeah, well, we, because there are, look, there are a lot of nude events that mm. happen, but, but they're generally, well, we call ourselves, I won't, I won't diss them, but we call ourselves high concept nudism. So we do like highly finished <coughs> events or strange things that you might not otherwise do, you know, like laser tag or like being in a penthouse or having a science fiction dress up party. So we don't do a regular nude get together. I think that the younger people, and we, and we tend to have a younger crowd than most mm -hmm. nude, nude groups. No, I think they're, they're more into it in a, in a sort of sense of being free. It's not, our events and nude, nudist events in general are not highly sexualized in, in the way that a warehouse party is. It's not that they're not a bit frisky, and of course they are. Everyone's naked and drinking yep. and whatever, but, but um, you know, there's not a lot of drinking by the standards of most events. So it has a different vibe. It has a much more, like I say, a much a softer, less demanding, uh, more accepting vibe. I'm Steve Pereira yet again at Invasion of the Nudies in this wintry evening in Paran in Melbourne, where I'm with a very mysterious, a very attractive and very naked stranger. Sir, who are you? Oh, good evening, my name is Lawrence. Uh, well, I'm one of the organisers of the Nudies Revolution and we want it to invade Melbourne with our nudity. And why do, why do you want to invade Melbourne with your nudity? Um, I think Melbourne is the nudist capital of Australia and we want it to do some really crazy out there stuff. I am Ryan. Uh, since New Year's I've been hanging out with these lovely nudist people and having the best time of my life. It's been so much fun, I've made new friends, had awesome fun. Asking you as one of the organisers, look at the range of people out there, and there's quite a few people out there. What's, what's the common interest? Is it nudism? Is it naturalism? What is it? Um, good question. I think uh, some of us are regulars have been doing it for a while. Yep. Some of it, like Brian, just um, has joined on and fell in love with the concept. Others, it's the first time tonight. And they just wanted to say, hey, let's just try something different and push our boundaries and learn um, what is it like to be naked in front of others? So one of the, one of the guys we were talking to earlier talks about high concept naturalism. So we, you're taking it beyond, you're pushing the boundaries a bit. Yeah. So it's no longer just the heights and the, and the nude beaches and the picnics. Yeah. But it's actually urban, you're, you're, ex, you're engaging in an urban space in an urban activity. activity. Yes, well, one of the concepts I love about these events is no phone. So people actually go and socialize. They chat to each other and meet new people, make new friends. Um, how often do we go to a bar or a club and everyone's on the phone and then actually go up to a complete stranger and goes, Hi, um, my name's Lawrence, you know, I love your costume tonight. Even, even tonight I've met a lady that's been three months pregnant a while ago. She had a baby three months ago. She's here, first time out of the house, away from the baby. She's having an awesome time. It's about yourself, feeling comfortable with who you are, um, being okay with your body and with your uh, mind as well, because how many of us criticise ourselves? Mm. And our inner um, critic just constantly makes us feel bad. And he's going, you know what, I'm okay. I am who I am and there's nothing bad about it. I have to say that is working on me because since I came in, I have started discarding clothing. Mm. Hmm. I'm getting to be a convert. 
But thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank Enjoy you for having Enjoy your us. party and what a fabulous event. All the best with it. Come along, have a great time. It'll be the best ever. What about you, Lawrence? What's the message you want to send out? Um, don't be scared, just try. you got nothing to lose. Everyone's here to support you and welcome you. Thank you very much. Again, we're at Invasion of the Nudies. I'm Steve Pereira, and I'm getting braver by the second. Thank you.